Our next speaker is Megan Sally Wells, council member and community organizer in Culver City. A graduate of UCLA, Megan traveled and worked extensively overseas as a translator and volunteer teacher in schools in France and Madagascar. After moving back to her home in Culver City in 2008, Megan became involved in grassroots community organization on a wide range of issues, including sustainability, bicycle advocacy, healthy communities, government transparency, and civil engagement. She holds several positions in local government, CEO of the nonprofit Downtown Neighborhood Association, co-founder of the Culver City Bicycle Coalition, and Transition Culver City. She is also an active member of the Safe Routes to School program at her son's elementary school. Sally Wells is a board member of Local Progress, a national network of progressive municipal policymakers. Megan was awarded Democrat of the Year in 2010 by the Los Angeles Council Democrat Party and was recognized by the National Women's Political Caucus, LA Westside Chapter, as one of 12 remarkable women in 2012. She is the fifth woman to be elected to the Council of Culver City in its 95 years. Welcome, Megan. Thank you for that introduction and thank you for having me here today and thank you our to our Vice Mayor Jeff Cooper for coming as well. Um, obviously, thank you to the college, uh, Nabil, your hospitality is, is so appreciated. Um, so I think the introduction has been made. Uh, I do want to say that I'm speaking for myself as an individual and not on behalf of the City Council. That's something I have to say. <laughs> Um, so let's get started. Uh, this is just a little bit of context, you know, where we are in the Los Angeles Basin, where Culver City is. Um, if you can't see, I would suggest coming a little closer because this is a, a smallish screen. Uh, so we've got Culver City, the Inglewood oil field. This is the largest urban oil field in the United States. It's probably been said already today. 10% of that oil field is in the city of Culver City. So we're just seven miles from downtown LA, nine miles from the Hollywood sign, four miles from Beverly Hills, five miles from Venice Beach, and four miles from a major international airport. Um, and then this little blue streak here is La Bayona Creek. As you can see, uh, the oil field itself runs right next to a very sensitive watershed that runs into the Santa Monica Bay. And this, oops, this is the old presentation. Okay, I added some slides this morning and I guess they're not on here. Okay, um, this is an approximation of the uh, fault line which should be running through the field and I'm sorry I was putting in new slides and I guess they didn't make it in here. Oh dear. Technical difficulties. That's a good start. Um, yeah, I <laughs> Oh dear. <laughs> well, sorry about that. Basically, what we want to do is contextualize where this, you know, these enhanced drilling techniques are being done. Uh, the type of population, and many of us are probably from the community. Uh, but I think the larger point is, it, it's not just an issue, thank you, Paul. It's not just an issue for our immediate neighborhoods, but for the region as a whole. Um, and here are some of the neighborhoods which probably where your homes and my home is. Uh, these are beautiful neighborhoods. Uh, we've got Ladera Heights, Windsor Hills, View Park, Baldwin Hills, Village Green. Uh, Blair Hills, Culver Crest, and all of Culver City. And when you, you know, this is just something I got from Google Maps and I circled what the communities are, but I think what's really interesting in this, if you look on Google Maps, what you see when you look up Inglewood oil field is this kind of brown mass and then you see Kenneth Hahn State Recreation Area. But what it doesn't say that 
This is the largest urban oil field in the United States, and I think it merits a little uh, label there on the map. And as many of you know, uh, the situation with a, if you get a closer view, here in uh, Windsor Hills, you have Windsor Hills Magnet School, which is a kindergarten through fifth grade school, just a couple of hun couple hundred yards from active oil drilling. Can I point something out? Please do. You see that? This is the, um, the Overhill Mine. This is the Overhill Grab, and you see that in the playground area where there are those, uh, you know, courts and things. That dark mark is the, the fault that goes all the way through the, that um, playground and then over to where the running track and the walking track is over there, which actually had a landslide because of the new, new uh, movement in that fault. Thanks. So this is a little bit of history. Now, let me just uh, add a little caveat. A lot of this occurred before well before I was on the council, so I can't take credit for any of the actions that were taken. I happened to be living abroad at the time, so you know I think some of the professionals are in the room because they lived through this. This is the these are some of the reports I got from our city staff. So you know if there are little minor corrections, uh, I'm sure you will have a lot to add to it. Um, this this is just the information that I've received. So drilling began way back in the 1920s. Um, and then PXP took over drilling and began drilling in 2004. In about 2005, there were toxic releases into some of our neighborhoods and people were smelling rotten egg uh, smells, which our doctor has referred to, um, that are indicative of hydrogen sulfide. And then the city found that new wells were being, being built with little or no regulations. And so that led into the whole CSD process, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with. But the city found that the CSD did not adequately protect the people. Yes, Rebecca. Can you please tell us what is a CSD? Community Standards District. So it's specific regulations for this for this um, oil field. Partnering with a lot of nonprofits, including uh, the Citizens Coalition for a Safe Community, represented here today and many others, uh, the city sued PXP and the county. But then they found, while they were in litigation, that the PXP had applied to the state for permits to do new and more drilling. So that's when the city put a moratorium into effect. PXP sued the city, saying it did not have the right to do that, that the, the oil company had a vested right to drill, uh, but the courts found that it did not have the right to, do, to enhance and to do new drilling uh, by right, and so they lost. <laughs> In about 2011, there, there was a settlement agreement between the county and all of the parties in the lawsuit, and the city moratorium has expired. And today, Culver City is working on its oil drilling ordinance. Um, even though the moratorium has expired for Culver City, to my knowledge, there hasn't been new drilling, new drilling in Culver City. Uh, however, in the county, there are at least 50 new wells. They drilled a new well two weeks ago right off college. Right off college. Yeah, there's a large uh, fence around it. The, the, uh, okay, and I, I'm, I believe that's probably county, but we're, our borders are kind of confusing. Um, so all of this, all of this happened uh, just about oil drilling. And of course, we're here today to talk about fracking. At the time, some people had heard about fracking, but it wasn't really in the collective consciousness as it is today. So all of a sudden, you start seeing media reports here and there talking about fracking. 
And people started asking, rightly so, is fracking happening in our backyard? Is what we've seen in other places in the nation happening right here? How would we know? Where are the studies? Where's the data? Where's the information? Well, <laughs> OMG, California doesn't regulate fracking. It, it really is hard to have data on specific fracking events when those fracking events aren't necessarily recorded in any type of official database. Now there's a we, we can talk about frac focus and you know there's some voluntary reporting, but it's voluntary. Now in June of 2012, the Dogger, have you gone over what Dogger is? Okay, so under the Department of Conservation for the state of California, Dogger, the Division of Gas and Geothermal Resources. Oil, gas, and geothermal. Oil, gas, and geothermal resources, AKA Dogger, that is the regulating state body. For oil drilling. Well, oil drilling. Okay. Five minutes. Okay. Um, and Dogger, recognizing that it did not regulate fracking, has been in the process of holding some workshops and developing some regulations. Well, Dogger, the Dogger Show came to Culver City. Uh, it was the best attended of all of the workshops in the entire state. We had standing room only, and that was just a panoramic view I took from the back of the, the room. I don't know if you can see, that's in city, city council chambers in Culver City. And the overwhelming citizen uh, message was ban it, ban it, ban it. So the next month, this is in uh, July of 2012, the city council unanimously passed a resolution asking <coughs> Governor Brown and Dogger to ban hydraulic fracturing until it can be proven safe for people, the environment, um, and that not only, it's, it's too bad I don't have the other slides because I underlined some of these things and I think the wording is very interesting here. It says, to immediately place a ban on hydraulic fracturing and on the disposal, disposal of fracking wastewater, which is what is you know, known to be causing earthquakes in other places in the world, by injection wells until Dogger takes all necessary and appropriate actions to adopt, implement, and enforce comprehensive regulations that will ensure that the public health and safety and the environment will be adequately protected. Now, I'm really proud that we passed this as a council. First in the nation. Uh, first in California. First in first California. California. In California. Uh, because other states have banned fracking in the entire state. This is just a resolution, and what it does is it is an ask. And unfortunately, to our ask, which was overwhelmingly supported by the, the people who came and gave our council input, um, there was no response. No response from Dogger, no response from the governor. A lot of applause that night when we passed that. Uh, but no official response from the state. <laughs> Surprised. Um, and interestingly, you know, a few months after we passed our resolution, uh, we got uh, to see the fracking study that the PXP had produced. Well, uh, uh, an independent uh, yeah. consultant, independent, so air quote, uh, a consultant, okay. A consultant uh, had produced, and one of the most interesting slides that I saw on there was showed uh, the sites where fracking that they're disclosing had taken place, and they're saying that it had 
Combined, a total of approximately 65 stages of conventional hydraulic fracturing have occurred at the Inglewood oil field since 2003. Um, I, it, it's a fascinating study. It has been picked apart by many activists, and there are, in my opinion, some pretty glaring uh, problems with the basic math, with the premise, uh, and with the facts in this study. Um, but I would, it, their, their study is online if you want to look at it. There's also a response from Food and Water Watch that's you know just a couple of pages, and point by point, it points out some of the, the issues with the study. Probably worth looking at. So the heart of the problem for me is the fact that we don't have comprehensive data proving whether fracking is safe in this area. And yet, it's allowed to go on, and it's not even regulated. Hi, Megan. Oh, dear. Um, let, me, let me just skip ahead really quickly. This, this is something as, you know, a native uh, Southern Californian, I was uh, born in Laurel Canyon, and all of my life, I've heard about uh, a couple of key issues in my city. Southern California, known for earthquakes, air pollution, and the lack of water. And lo and behold, fracking pinpoints these very issues that we most of us have grown up with. That is, it's accused of causing earthquakes, air pollution, the overuse and pollution of water. So quickly, very quickly, um, this is not just a Culver City issue or a Windsor Hills issue. It's not in just in one little community. Uh, the projections of the oil in this whole area, in all of California, are tremendous. But, and so we have to, for me the takeaway is that we have to work together regionally to get some concrete solutions to it. I also, and I know my time is up, I apologize. I want to end on a different note though, because it's not just about uh, getting fracking out of California, getting fracking out of my backyard. Um, I personally would not consider myself successful if we just outsource it to other communities, to other places in the world. So as what I can do on the council is try to make a city that is less reliant on fossil fuels. So, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm the alternate member on the Expo board. Uh, very excited about uh, our metro and the extension to Santa Monica. Um, I'm also a bike advocate. And, uh, you know, there's several things that we can do, not only to get away from the fossil fuel use, to reduce that use, um, but also to, to, you know, ultimately, why don't we produce our own energy with our sun? Uh, because I, I have two sons, and I, I want to make sure that I'm doing everything I possibly can to make sure that the energy that we are reliant on does not kill us. It seems like a small thing considering all of humanity and all of human achievement. And I think that together we can get there. Thank you, Megan.